Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to this webinar on exploring Bells and Team Roles. We are really happy to have you with us today. Uh, a quick introduction. My name is uh, Pearl D'Souza. I'm the director of Pre-Pearl uh, Training Development, which is also the regional representative um, for Belvin in India. Uh, we've been leveraging Belvin for over 14 years. Uh, we were the first to bring the Belvin accreditation to India. Uh, and our forte really is maximizing potential, whether it is at the individual level, uh, the team level, or the organization and organization culture change. Um, I am an accreditation course facilitator for Belvin and um, have been leveraging the tool um, in a cross section of industries and very excited and looking forward to sharing with you today um, as much as I can really in, in the time that we have in terms of how we've been using Belvin and a little more about the tool. So what do we have planned today? What's the webinar outline? Um, definitely, first of all, the introduction to the nine team roles. We'll do a little, a little input into what the nine team roles are. The technique in teamwork, really the how of collaboration. And I, I personally believe this is, this is key to the entire theory. Uh, how is Belden different from other behavioral tools? And I think uh, a couple of you would be interested in, in knowing more about this aspect. And finally, of course, um, industry leveraging team roles. Um, in fact, Dr. Belvin celebrated his 90th birthday this year, as a couple of you may already be knowing. And it was a fantastic opportunity to really listen in on how um, organizations worldwide are using Belvin. We'll try and share with you one or two uh, stories, especially from India. OK, so to get started, that's Dr. Meredith Belvin. And it all started off in the 1960s when he really wanted to answer the question, why do some teams succeed while others fail? And I think as leaders and managers, uh, this is an important question to really understand and know. Um, this was really studied at the Henley Management College. And the aim really has been to, um, to really predict behavior to really predict and say, uh, how do we know whether a team is going uh, to be successful or no? And uh, a number of studies were done where in different cohorts or syndicates were put together. Uh, this is, in fact, uh, over 12 years of research before they came out into industry and they realized that there needed to be certain contributions if a team needed to succeed, um, one of them being of the ability to come up with an idea, um, someone having the ability to be actually to actually weigh the pros and cons of things, um, someone actually looking at um, uh, at details, and this really led to the realization of certain clusters of behavior which were important for the success of a team, and these clusters are today what are known as the Belvin team roles. And that's what you can see on your screen, the nine team roles over there. Uh, let's go a little deeper into, into the team roles. So there are three categories of team roles. You've got action, social, and thinking. The names of the team roles. Under the action roles, you've got shaper, implementer, and completer finisher. The social roles would be coordinator, team worker, and resource investigator. And your thinking roles are plant, specialist, and monitor evaluator. What does what do these words mean? Yeah, let's look at the action roles. So you're looking at the shaper. Um, I, I love the the images that go along with each of the roles. They really give you an idea of what those clusters of behaviors really mean. So when you're looking at a whip, definitely someone who brings who's not afraid to crack the whip, someone who drives. Uh, has the courage to overcome obstacles. Uh, now, along with each of the team roles, you also realize there is what is known as an associated or allowable weakness. In the case of a shaper, uh, not surprisingly, these are individuals who may offend uh, people's feelings. The implementer, the cogs in a wheel, really what we're talking about over here is process. Uh, these are individuals who know how to turn ideas into practical actions, are uh, fantastic at organizing work. Uh, know exactly what needs to be done when. Um, flip side, uh, they may tend to be a little inflexible. Uh, and this is really coming from one wanting to maintain processes, uh, wanting to maintain standards. 
you then have the completer finisher someone who's really wanting to perfect uh, you know, tighten the loose ends, wanting to make sure uh, everything is the way it's supposed to be, and actually, more importantly, raising the standard. So someone who's polishing and perfecting. A uh, possible weakness, uh, reluctant to delegate. And why rel reluctant to delegate? Well, these are individuals who are aiming for perfection, and um, well, according to them, they are the ones who only know what perfection is, and therefore reluctance to delegate. Social roles, the coordinator. The symbol, a person who is the conductor of an orchestra. And over here, these are individuals who have a fantastic understanding of the goal and very importantly, are able to spot who is good at what and therefore their ability to delegate effectively. They may be seen also as basically assigning work to others. So it becomes important for individuals, for coordinators to manage this bit. And we're going to talk a little later in terms of how do you manage it. Resource investigator. The symbol is a phone, um, highly networked individuals. They are great at exploring opportunities, fantastic at developing contacts, um, extroverted in nature. Um, flip side, may lose interest once the initial excitement has passed. As soon as things are going to get mundane, uh, these guys want to move on onto something else. Uh, where is really uh, the action coming in next? And the team worker in the social role. Uh, team workers really, as you can see with the symbol over there, individuals who bring in harmony, uh, individuals who are fantastic at listening, very sensitive to the needs of others, uh, those who avert friction. Um, flip side, they can be indecisive uh, in crunch situations. Quite possible uh, for that to happen. You then have uh, the thinking roles. In the thinking roles, you've got the plant, uh, the symbol is that of uh, a light bulb, and therefore someone who's creative, imaginative, and ideas person, um, not very great at evaluating their own ideas. You've then got the monitor evaluator, and the monitor evaluator is, the symbol is the eye, someone who really looks at all of the options, uh, really looking at the pros and cons, so sees all options, judges impartially, possibility for them to be critical and to be seen as being pretty critical. Specialist, uh, as you can see, a specialized tool over there. So individuals who have knowledge, but really deep knowledge, and possibly in an area uh, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty small, but they bring in knowledge that's in very rare supply. Uh, there is this tendency for them to really dwell on technicalities. Yeah. Now, the question over here is, do we play all of these 19 roles? And I'm going to give you a, a second there just to figure out, do you think all of us play all of the 19 roles? And the truth really is that, yes, the team roles are all available for us. The behaviors are available for us, but really, there are about one to two, well, there are about one to three team roles that we play really well. And these are known as our preferred team roles. Um, I like to always take the example of, you know, think of an outfit uh, that you like wearing. You enjoy wearing. When you wear it, people have told you you look fantastic. You know you look good in that outfit. Those are your preferred roles. Yeah, those are the top three roles. Now think of an outfit that you don't exactly like to wear, but if you're forced, you will wear it. You hate wearing a tie to work, but just because you need to wear it to work, you will wear it. Those are your manageable roles. And then there are some team roles. Well, think of an outfit you don't want to be caught dead wearing. Okay, Maybe it's Superman's outfit, or maybe it's Govinda's outfit. Looks good on them, not necessarily good on you. Those are your least preferred roles. The last three roles. Yeah. Um, these are the team roles that uh, as much as we try to play them, uh, we are not effective and it can be highly stressful. And this, according to me, is really the crux and this is where we are coming deeper into the whole team role theory. To understand that there are certain team roles that I am going to be fantastic at and there are some team roles I am not going to be good at. This is now when I begin to realize that, yes, we need other people also in the team. 
And this is now the beginning of collaboration. Before I move on, just a little point over here. I forgot to mention in the beginning. Uh, if there are any questions uh, that that come up, uh, please do put them in uh, on the on the screen that you see. I see a number of comments already coming in. So fantastic! We will have a look at it um, at the uh, at the end of the section where I hope to keep some time to uh, to answer a couple of question and answers. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Coming back to the team roles over here, and we were talking about the nine team roles, and we spoke about uh, the preferred roles, manageable roles, and the least preferred roles. And I was saying this is really when collaboration begins to come in, begins to set in. Um, and this is one of the differentiators, really, of Belvin, because Belvin says, identify your strengths to maximize them. So your preferred roles know what they are, wear those, wear those, wear those outfits more often because you're really effective when you wear them. And know your weaknesses, not to overcome them or not to get better at them, but know your weaknesses to manage them. Now, how do we do that? How do we know our weaknesses and how do we manage our weaknesses? Well, number one is the awareness of your top team roles, the awareness of what are the possible um, strengths along with them, what are the possible flip sides. Now, this is when, and I'm bringing in here the whole aspect of the team. Once individuals in the team begin to know what their team roles are, uh, you can actually map them. And what I'm showing you right now is a team circle. So you've got all of the different team roles there, and you have got uh, the names of the individuals here mapped on the circle. You now begin to realize saying, hey, I am not a good resource investigator. However, Peter is a fantastic resource investigator. I'm going to go in for this meeting uh, next, sun next Saturday. Um, it's really a meeting that's a fantastic networking opportunity. Uh, maybe I'd like to ask Peter if he, would, if he would like to join me on this meeting. What begins to happen now is you're beginning to look at others in your team, and you're beginning to look for collaboration opportunities. Another very important, and what I found a very interesting thing about the team roles is, the weakness of a particular team role is the strength of another team role. I'm going to repeat that again. The weakness of a particular team role is the strength of another team role. Um, and I think that just goes on to say that, that man really is a social animal and man needs to work together. Uh, let me give you an example. So if you've got all of the team roles and we've looked at the shaper, and we said the shaper is someone who's fantastic at driving and closing things. But at the same time, the shaper is not very sensitive to the needs of others. You've actually got a team role, which is the team worker, who is very sensitive to the needs of others. The team worker on the other side uh, can find it sometimes difficult to make tough decisions um, in critical situations. But hey, the shaper is fantastic at doing that. And you will find that for all of the other team roles, that they complement one another. And you know, I keep saying this: if someone irritates you at work, you know, think about it. They they probably have a strength that you need and something that will complement the way you work. So there is technique and teamwork. And how? What is this technique and teamwork? Number one: once you begin to understand this, project teams and teams within uh, organizations. The allocation of work responsibilities within the team become more effective. The way we demarcate work, now taking team roles into consideration, becomes number one more effective and really very engaging. Uh, engagement levels are seen to go up. Managing your weaknesses, and I spoke about this earlier, really reaching out to the other for support, uh, that becomes very possible. And finally, appreciation of differences and acceptance of the other. Um, this is one of the key things um, that I have found in all of my experience using the Belvin. Uh, it really helps teams embrace diversity, um, whether it's cross-cultural, whether it is across generations, uh, whether it is, as I said, across cultures. Because what it is doing is it is beginning to help you understand where the other person is coming from. It's helping you understand why the person is behaving the way he is. 
And more importantly, it is helping you see what is the strength that the other person is bringing onto the table. And that is key. Delvin really is a strength-based perspective. Okay. Belvin and other tools um, moving into this section now where we're looking at what, what's the difference. What does Belvin do? Uh, Belvin measures behavior. Yeah, uh, behavior is uh, or is affected by a number of things, our personality, our environment, our DNA, of course, our mental abilities. Yeah. Um, now, very interestingly, behavior is what we relate to at the workplace. Um, what I see is behavior, and that's how I respond to you. Now, also one thing to think about is, can I see my own behavior? And the answer to that is, no, I cannot see my own behavior. Um, I have an intention, and I'm hoping that intention comes out. However, it's only people who are working along with me who see that behavior and are relating to that behavior. And this is what Belvin does. It's really focusing on something that is observable, something that's measurable, and something that is affecting us at the workplace. Now, uh, this is an example of one of the, one of the reports or one of the, uh, the pages of uh, an individual's uh, profile. You've got the individual self-perception, and you've got the observer inputs. And for me, this is the most, one of the most important value adds um, of the Belvin. That's getting in observers to get in their inputs. And who are the observers? Observers are individuals who work closely with you. Um, your boss, your subordinate, your colleagues, uh, people who you're interacting with on a daily basis. Uh, how are they putting in their inputs? Well, actually, they basically just have a list of words, a list of descriptors. And they are just stick marking those words that they think are descriptive of you. Uh, the system analyzes all of that. And what you actually get is a holistic report, which talks about your self-perception, your observer's overall views, and of course, then your overall team role profile. What are the users and applications? We'll try and talk about that a little later. But I'm guessing as you would already be begin to see, um, fantastic at really identifying truly what are my strengths? Uh, what are other people seeing as my strengths? Um, have I realized this? Um, have I, uh, did I know this is something that people, that people like about me, that, that, they, that they find is valuable in me? Uh, so fantastic insights uh, on that front. Uh, also, uh, actually knowing how effective you are on a particular team role. Uh, and there is a particular report that actually shows you how much of your strengths of a particular team role are being seen vis-a-vis -vis, um, you know, the allowable weaknesses. Um, so what this really helps an individual do is really look at how can I be more effective as an individual contributor, number one. And if I am moving now into a team space, how can I be an effective team member, an effective team player? And if I am a leader, how do I now leverage these resources to work in the context of the team? Um, the main difference between Belvin, according to me, and in terms of what we've seen so far, line managers get Belvin. Um, they understand uh, Belvin. And I think it's really coming from um, the simplicity of the language, uh, the simplicity of the team roles. But however, in that simplicity, uh, for individuals to actually see it translating immediately onto work. Um, in that simplicity, for individuals to immediately see the depth uh, of the content and to actually see that whatever that they are, they are talking about in theory is actually happening in reality. Uh, observer inputs, um, as I said earlier, definitely very critical and fantastic, especially when you're looking at the whole aspect of coaching also. When you're looking at uh, managers and leaders moving on to the next level, um, you're looking at leaders trying to identify what is their authentic leadership style. And the observer inputs gives you fantastic insight uh, into what other people are seeing as your strengths. And most importantly, finally, the translation of theory to practicality. Um, 
individual seeing on the job changes uh, on the ground changes um and really a tool that that is something that line people once they understand the the team roles and the crux of the theory they absolutely just run with it themselves you don't really need an outside person to come in and explain to them how to use the reports it's something that they themselves start using in their work meetings and in their team meetings um and of course a uh, uh, very valuable uh, input of course is the video coaching link um you know along with the uh, with the individual report uh, an important part of the report is uh, once the uh, the report is completed you get what is known as the video coaching link which is a 10 minute video on how to best use your top team role uh we found this really useful for individuals uh post getting the report either at a at a workshop or at a coaching session uh to come back to the workplace and see okay um how how do i use this at work or to get further inputs on how to how to apply it um in their actual work situation and work culture what are the belbin reports like so you've got the individual report um you've got the individual report which is uh, a set of 10 uh, sub reports uh, each of them having different applications in fact one of the reports and we will probably do a separate session on that is we actually look at how you can leverage your top team roles or uh, to design kras uh, that are engaging or how do you define your current kras in a way that's leveraging your top team roles uh immediately what we've realized is um engagement levels with their job uh, becomes uh, or goes goes to the next level uh the team how do you collaborate within the team fantastic input to to managers um using the team role circle the team culture chart work pairs and this is interesting you know dynamics really comes about when uh you've got two individuals working together and when you've got two individuals working together there's what we call team role chemistry uh and team role chemistry comes about when you really look at do these team roles complement one another uh is there a possibility of friction and why is the friction happening uh this insight really helps bosses and subordinates colleagues work out their relationship in a way such that it delivers business results and finally uh belbin reports also for jobs so yes for resourcing for actually identifying the right person for a job uh you have the whole job section um um uh, focused on on predicting really um uh, um success for an individual in in a particular job so that's fantastic insight uh, even while you are developing uh the plan for the individual in terms of the individual development plan industry experience um what have we what have we seen so far in industry um i would like to definitely talk about uh, mkr pharmaceuticals uh mkr is one of the organizations we have been working with um right from 200 or uh, 2014 uh one of the fastest growing pharma companies and what they really wanted was uh, a leadership and team transformation um the organization was ready to move on to the next level and realized that the way work happened needed to change uh, we started off using the belbin for the top top management and the function heads um once the language was used amongst the leadership immediately did not take them time to move within the entire organization um as of 2016 we've got over 400 individuals uh, across all of the different um segments and across different functions uh who have done their belbin profiling and we've got um uh, one of uh, one of our belbin accredited participants who is the internal uh, in-house uh, coach and the internal belbin uh, expert in mq and he's really been taking this within the organization what has really been happening over there is intact teams have now been meeting together looking at how do we improve our effectiveness um is there a team role that's lacking within the team if there is how do we now manage it uh, is it someone's manageable team role and can the person step up uh as a team do we need to put together an action plan such that we realize that um uh, such that we meet uh the goal that is that has been stated uh, discussions now that the teams have amongst themselves um what has really happened what's the output uh very interestingly uh, managers themselves have reported of improved team spirit 
uh, effective delegation, something that wasn't happening in the past, smoother processes, um, enhanced engagement. Uh, and what I found really interesting was work-life balance, uh, being able to work in a way now such that, number one, they're enjoying themselves, they're enjoying the work. Um, and secondly, also paying attention to aspects that are most important and most critical. Um, and I think you would agree that when you begin to work on behavior and dynamics and you start working from a place of strength, uh, you're really uh, spreading the positive bit around. Uh, one of our uh, one of one of the, the examples that we really like is with a telecom major that we're currently working with, and they have what is known as leader simulation, wherein they are using the Belbin profiling for um, for leaders who have just joined the organization or who have just joined a new role, and they are using it to help the leader uh, understand the team that he currently has. So the profiling done for the leader and the team. Uh, it, what, it really ha what really happens over there is, number one, it helps the team understand the leader because you've got a common language to understand the strengths of your leader. You've now got a common language to understand the culture of the entire team, and it gets the team moving faster. It gets them to start working together. Um, I'm going to give one, one example from you know the 90s stories uh, that we've had um, recently. Wherein, as I said, um, sorry, um, for Dr. Belden's 90th birthday. And I think the story that, that really uh, struck me was the one from Netherlands, um, wherein they used uh, the Belden in a hospital. Uh, and over there, there were, uh, you know, a, a long story short, there were 30 beds in that hospital. And uh, there were about, I think, 33 individuals uh, working together. Uh, however, the number of beds occupied were only about 25, and they couldn't go beyond that because uh, they just felt that there was too much of work. Uh, once they did the Belden profiling, once they began understanding themselves, uh, within a couple of months, they were actually able to reduce uh, the, the work staff together in terms of once they began to allocate work amongst themselves and, and all 30 beds used within the organization or within the hospital. Um, just an example of concrete terms, how, you know, once you really look at dynamics within the team and you look at strengths, uh, things can really start moving and start uh, changing. Um, the Belbin Toolkit, what all does it uh, help us do? So you've got um, meeting processes, onboarding, team construction, career succession planning, identifying development leads, needs. Uh, all different applications uh, that could be that could be looked at. Um, this, in a nutshell, really today, what what I've tried to do is, you know, give you a, a little gist about the nine team roles. Really, the technique of collaboration uh, per se. Uh, how does Belbin kind of um, help you do that? Uh, and share just a few stories in terms of wherein we have used uh, the Belbin profiling or we've used uh, Belbin to kind of look at uh, business results and improve effectiveness. Um, at this point, I do think we've got a good amount of time to, to hopefully have a little discussion and answer a couple of queries. So I'm actually going to move on to check and see what are the queries uh, that have come in. Uh, we've got one one question or a comment um i think that says um sorry on knowing your mbti type uh, sorry can we just uh, yeah i'm just trying to read this i think this is coming from yogesh gandhi from mahindras and uh, the question is can knowing your mbti type be an added advantage along with your team type oh yes yogesh absolutely um and it's beautiful because we use the mbti and we use the belbin uh, together um and it is extremely uh, effective um especially uh, when you are looking, number one, at an individual, looking at enhancing his effectiveness, and you're looking at leadership development. Um, how does it really work? As I said earlier in my previous slide, you know, that spoke about uh, Belvin measures behavior. One of the key inputs uh, that, um, uh, that really affects behavior or that feeds into behavior is our personality. And that would then be our MBTI type. Uh, the MBTI type helps us understand our preferences. 
Um, and the Belvin then helps us understand how do we use those preferences uh, in order to make uh, a difference in the organization. Um, you will see when you do your MBTI uh, and you do your Belvin, uh, you will begin actually seeing the link between the two. Uh, definitely helps uh, with deeper understanding. We recommend it completely when we are doing our coaching, uh, especially for, uh, you know, when, when you're developing a leadership pipeline, when you're helping individuals get into that self-discovery of figuring out what is my authentic leadership style uh, for me to harness fully. Yeah, uh, to answer your question, it definitely, definitely uh, helps. We have uh, another query uh, which said from Usha Devi that says, how does Belvin help a meeting process? Um, you know, in fact, uh, there has been a, a little study, uh, Usha, that has been done by our colleagues in America. Uh, and they have been using uh, Belvin very effectively for meetings. They've actually found that uh, the meeting time reduces uh, by a significant uh, percentage when they use the Belvin. Uh, how do we actually do it? Uh, you actually do it uh, by looking at the team roles that would be required at different times of a meeting. Okay, uh, very quickly, I'm just going to try and throw a little, I'm going to try and throw a little light on this. Um, at the beginning of a meeting, say you basically want, you know, ideas and inputs to come in. Okay, and this is, I'm broadly taking, uh, you know, a, a general meeting as an example. So say the first one is more of a divergent thing. You want different ideas to come in. Uh, you're actually leaving space there for your plants and your resource investigators to give in their inputs. So once you know the team roles of the different people on the team, uh, while everyone is open to contribute at this phase of the meeting, you're particularly saying, OK, have we ensured that we've heard from our plants and our resource investigators? Now that all the ideas are on the table, we are now looking to see, OK, we, we want to we weed out the ideas and see, OK, which one's going to work, which one's not going to work. And probably at this point of time, you may want to have a monitor evaluator and a specialist coming in because these are guys who are fantastic at saying, OK, what's really going to work for the goal that we have in mind? So while others contribute, you're specifically making sure that the monitor evaluator and specialist inputs are coming in. And finally, when you want to close towards the planning, uh, you want to say, OK, now that we've decided what we want to do, uh, how do we put this into action? How do we put this into process? And you probably want, um, for example, an implementer to come in there. So depending on what the meeting is for, um, you can actually identify which are the main team roles that are going to be required. And because the team members understand the team roles, they do not take offense at all when you're actually talking team roles and saying, hey, guys, we've not heard, we've not got a monitor evaluator input here. And I think, for example, um, Ashok is, is the monitor evaluator. We know he's the monitor evaluator. Ashok, what do you have to say? So it definitely helps getting meetings more effective and uh, us spending less time in a lot of meetings and making sure that it's time uh, well spent. Um, have we got a few more? I'm just going through the different... Um, comments that have come in okay 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 a question again from yogesh uh yogesh uh, is asking us about the mbti one more question also mbti uh, we don't use for recruitment tool is that the same case with belvin yeah so uh yogesh uh, very rightly the mbti uh, is is not used as a recruitment uh, tool that is correct and it should not be used as a recruitment tool um with regards to the Belbin team roles, uh, you can use the Belbin when you are looking at resourcing or identifying the right person for the job. And why are you doing this? You are doing this because, number one, you are profiling the job that is required. OK, so you have the ability to profile the job, which helps you understand what is it really that the manager is looking for in the job? What are the contributions he is looking for in the job? Uh, you then do the profiling for the individual to help you understand, number one, where do those team roles fall within this individual's team role profile? Uh, Belbin, of course, wouldn't say do not take this person or take this person, but it's definitely giving you inputs uh, to help you provide whatever support is necessary, number one, A, to take the decision, number two, uh, provides inputs to, pro to help you uh, give whatever support is required to help that person excel in the job. 
So for example, whether it is matching what is required from the job and the individual team roles, you may then want to have a development plan in place or help the person collaborate with others, etc. But really looking at how do we get success in the job. Uh, Belbin is about predicting, uh, really predicting who is best placed and how can we leverage our strengths uh, in a particular um, job domain. Yeah, so definitely inputs that can be used for allocating uh, or uh, assigning the right person uh, for the right job. Yeah. Let me see. Are there any other queries um, that have come in or any other comments? So. Um, Thank you. Apologies for that little bit of a technical snag. Um, however, technology allows us to do a number of things and then a few snags here and there. But uh, thank you for staying uh, for staying on. Um, I know Yogesh uh, needed to leave, but we'll, we'll catch up with Yogesh a little later. Um, uh, for the rest uh, of all of us over here, uh, the question that I was uh, that I was really answering was, you know, the whole bit about the recruitment bit. Um, and I was talking about how there is uh, one of the sub reports in the Belvin uh, individual profile uh, is a fantastic input in terms of you know the kind of questions uh, that you could possibly ask that would help the person uh, to talk about uh, areas that he could really contribute um, and i'm particularly reminded of this one example when I was talking to a person about his report and he was a very quiet person. And when I was explaining to him that this is, you know, a report that's given to a person who is the manager of the job to kind of help him understand you. And he started smiling and he said, you know, on my own, I don't really talk about myself. But if you were to put the question in the way it is mentioned in this report, I would definitely want to talk to you about my projects and I would definitely want to kind of uh, help get uh, you know uh, get help you get more insight in terms of what I do. So yes, definitely is something that can be used uh, for the sourcing uh, as well. Yeah, uh, I hope with that we have uh, covered a couple of uh, queries. If there are any other inputs or queries that you have, uh, please uh, please do mail in. Uh, let us know. We have uh, we have a few more minutes um, before uh, before the end time. Uh, I'm just uh, scrolling through the comments to see if I've missed out on any uh, query or question. Um, but I think we should have got more of, uh, more or less, uh, I think, all of that. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Um, okay. And the a good e type. Yeah. I think we've uh, we've got uh, most of the queries coming in. Um, so that was the Q and A. Uh, just to also let you know that uh, there is a Belvin accreditation that is happening on the 17th and 18th of November, uh, 2016, uh, in Mumbai. So that's happening uh, next month. Um, would be absolutely delighted uh, for you all to join us. Uh, do let us know. Uh, the early bird discount is currently on, so uh, so you may want to catch that uh, catch that discount. Uh, do log on to www.prepearl.net um, to uh, to register to get more details. Uh, if you have any more queries, would like to know more about the Belvin please uh, feel free to get in touch. You've got our website. You will also receive a mail shortly with the link uh, to, to the webinar. Uh, we plan on having uh, more input sessions uh, and more uh, conversations with various aspects uh, of really behavior uh, and behavior dynamics and would love to, uh, to meet all of you again. Uh, once again, thank you very much for joining in. Um, absolutely loved the interaction. Thank you for the queries, the comments, um, and for being with us today. Thank you so much, and have a fantastic evening ahead. See you all. Bye-bye.